So what is it so special about Taj Mahal? What makes it one of the seven wonders of the world? What is so special? Is it because 22,000 artisans were required to build the Taj Mahal? How do you manage so many people, so many talented people? The measurement, the methods, all of it together, 22,000 people were required to build this. Was it that that made Taj Mahal so special? Or was it the fact that it took 20 years for these 22,000 artisans to complete Taj Mahal? 20 years. I am guessing along the 20 years, so many of them who are building it would have probably died. 20 long years to build it. Or for the guys who look very analytical into stuff, was it because of the symmetry, the geometrics, the replication architecture, the marble, or the finer details of Taj Mahal? Did you guys know that the Taj Mahal looked identical from all four sides? Those interesting things. Is that what makes Taj Mahal so special? Or for the guys who are into monetics, right? It would have taken 50 billion Indian rupees probably to build Taj Mahal today. It took 32 million back then in 1653 and it would take 50 billion Indian rupees. 5,000 crores. What is it that makes it so special? Now for a second, I want all of you to imagine, right? You have all the money in the world, right? Every single dollar, every single penny, you have it all. Would you be able to build the Taj Mahal again? Hire the best people, get the best tools, the best equipments, the best place, all of it, the finest that the money can buy, and still build a Taj Mahal that looks pillar to pillar same, brick to brick same? Will you be able to do it? And even if you're able to do it, would it still feel so special? For some, Taj Mahal is special because of the grandeur that it brings. For some, it's the architecture. For some, it's the people that are involved. For some, it's the money. But for most people, it's a symbol of eternal love. Every single human being craves for that love. How many of you here want your better half to probably gift you something like the Taj Mahal? I'm guessing everyone, right? Even me. So this is a simple, right? When you stand in front of the Taj Mahal, it said that you remember the person you love the most. A quite awesome feeling, I am suppose. So you go there, you stand right in front of this magnificent building, and then you look at it and you feel, wow, that is an awesome gift. Wish I would have got something like this. So there is an experience beyond the bricks, beyond the architecture, beyond the money, beyond the people. There was an unforgettable experience that Taj Mahal brings you. I think that is what makes Taj Mahal so special. The experience you feel when you stand right in front of the magnificent building. Now, I'm an entrepreneur. I built this company with five of my friends. So what is it that we strive when we build a company? Do we just build a product? Or do we build experiences that our people, our users can enjoy? How many of you are here like, want to start a company? Can I have your hands up? Join the startup revolution, as it's called these days. Yeah, I see quite a few hands. Great. Well, best of luck to all of you guys, first of all. And I would like to add this point. There are so many people starting up, but very few, I guess, that 1% succeed. Now, what does this 1% do different that helps them achieve greatness? What could that be? It's called the Nirvana moment, right? The eternal bliss that you make your user feel. Whether you are a software company, whether you are an art, like, art, architecture company, whether you are this products company, whether you build boutiques, you sell clothes, whatever it is that you do, if you can make people feel this eternal bliss, that is when you are striking this nirvana. That is when you will build a great product, a great company. How many of you use WhatsApp? Pretty much the entire hall. Okay, how many of you use Facebook Messenger? Considerably less. How many use WhatsApp, WeChat? Or a line? Or a telegram? 
even lesser. So why do you use WhatsApp, right? What is so special about WhatsApp? Why do so many people here use it? Isn't the same that Messenger does? It still sends you messages, you can send GIFs, you can send this, you can send that, but still you use WhatsApp. Why is that? Have you ever thought about it? When I grew up, right, when there was no internet connectivity and the BSNL guys used to come to the house, they have a bsnl.co.in, but that's not the website they check. They check for google.com. They type it in, press the enter, and see if google.com loads. But that's the standard to check if you have internet connectivity. On the mobile, you load up WhatsApp. See if you're getting that one interesting message that you want from your user or one from your friend. I have no idea how they've done it, but the first network ping that goes out of a switched on Android device is to a WhatsApp server. No matter how small the edge network is, no matter how small the Wi-Fi is, if you have connectivity, WhatsApp will deliver you that message. Bridging the gap to your loved one by a second, by a millisecond, how much it is, it does not matter. It brings you that experience. And that is why so many people use WhatsApp. So when you're building a product, you have to decide, you have to figure out what is your user's nirvana moment? What will make them truly happy? How many of you have taken an Uber ride? Quite a few again. So Uber recently did 2 billion rides, that is 200 crore rides. It took them six years to get to their 1 billion rides and less than seven months to their next 1 billion. 100 crore rides in seven months. How does a company grow so quickly, so fast? If you look at it, there are technology company that is providing you transportation, right? That's the obvious thing. So many guys are trying to do it. Be a technology company, provide you transportation, provide you rides. But what does WhatsApp, well, I mean, what does Uber do different? It solves people's problems head on. The first one being, I need a ride right now. I press a button, I get my cab in six minutes. That's their benchmark. They try to deliver you a cab in six minutes. That's all. The second one, the pe person coming to pick me up, how do I trust him? Is the guy a nice person? They solved it with the ratings. They have the driver's car, the driver's photograph. Okay, you know you're a somewhat trustworthy person. The next is the payment. Do I pay cash? Will I get balance? Will I be stranded? Will I have to go and get a balance and all that stuff? Link your credit card, Paytm, forget about it. There's no cash transaction, it just works seamlessly. Or for that matter, if you have your friend joining in on your right, it's always difficult to split fares. Again, Uber has this option, you can tap a button and then the fare is automatically split between you and your co-passenger. All of these simple pain problems, right, things that users had, they've solved it all beautifully. That is why, a person, once he books a cab on Uber, gets it in six minutes, if he does get that, he's going to stay with Uber because he has enjoyed that aha moment or the nirvana moment. So whatever product you build, it will be changed, right? It will be different depending upon the product that you build. But whatever it is that you build, always try to keep the user at the center of it. So at ReFi, we focus on three things. We are the top 1% of apps on Android for these three reasons, right? One is we love our users very, very dearly. There was this once that we had 20 different categories across 21 languages, all done with six people. We are a six member team and we did 21 languages, recipes in 21 languages for a festival across so many different geographies. The six of us were stretched thin with resources. We were working day and night to get this done. We spent those sleepless nights because we loved our users. We wanted them to feel that extra bit special. So always love your user. Give them whatever they want. The next is a differentiator. If you're building a new product that's already there, it's totally cool. You can build something that's already there, it's totally fine. But you have to have a clear differentiator. It cannot be something like, he was using PHP, okay, and I'm using JavaScript. That cannot be your differentiator. Your differentiator has to be 10x more. This guy did it in 10 seconds, I'm gonna do it in one second. And that should be your differentiator. Build products that totally redefine the landscape. Absolute difference. 
that's a differential that we focus on and finally the most important one experiment people love using experimental tech right if there is this beta version of a product that's out a lot of people sign up for it and your loyal users love that you do experiments they sure okay this is going to crash it is going to have issues it's going to be a bit slower it might work well at some times it might not well like work at other times but still they love your effort that okay these guys are doing something doing something to help me do it and next better so always experiment that is the only way you are going to do mind boggling work and once you have done all of this this is another reality that you have to accept imitation is the sincerest form of flattery you do great work people are going to copy you the moment you accept this fact you can live peacefully there is no point in going around and telling okay this guy copied my idea that guy copied my idea if you had have built a great experience then these guys have nothing to do probably your user would go and use the other guy's product but then hey realize okay the other guy was much better than this looks the same feels the same but there is something different so they'll always come back to the experience that you gave them so always build products that transcend time transcend and build great experiences how many of you are in the 90s kids born in the 1990s okay so i was born in 1990 right so we are this generation that saw the transition of technology we have seen the floppy disks we have seen the crt monitors then we moved on to cd drives dvd drives pen drives flash drives ssds we have seen it all back when we grew up yahoo was the biggest thing on the internet i was proud to have my first yahoo id made it was such a special moment they had this website that gave you everything from astrology to news to movies to music they had everything they owned in the 1990s then in 2000 something interesting came along right google they brought just a search bar and a button and started sending you to the best content you wanted movies they'll send you to imdb you wanted information they'll send you to wikipedia directing you to the right information people were thrilled right everybody hooked on to google google owned the 2000s now something interesting is happening again the next transition apps i can probably google location or like google for a movie but i would still install a book my show or a google maps each task is getting an app of its own the app revolution so we want to be pioneers of this app revolution and the next logical step in this evolution would be content coming to you without you having to search for it if you want to cook this awesome recipe for tonight with your loved one we want to be there providing you the best content and to close it i read a, i i woke up today morning reading this article about yahoo being possibly acquired for 5 billion dollars by verizon a company that was like an idol that i worshiped when i was growing up is being sold for 5 billion when whatsapp and the newcomers get north of 15 to 20 billion dollars when they are being bought so what happened in the last 20 years yahoo built great products but possibly the experience was better in somebody who came later probably they copied the idea whatever they did but they did it really well because they had better experiences so always think of this first if you're building something build for the user at heart make him happy make him feel special and build great experiences and not just products because products can be copied but experiences cannot thank you so much